We've all seen toilet seats that nobody in their right mind would want to sit down on. Toilet seats with who knows what stuck to them. But imagine a fellow devoting over 50 years of his life to leaving as much who knows what stuck to as many toilet seats as one man possibly could. Welcome to Barney Smith's Toilet Seat Art Museum. The toilet seats in Barney's museum are covered in crap. So are the museum walls and ceiling. There's crap everywhere you look. Everywhere you look. They call him the king of the commode, and when you drive up to his Alamo Heights bungalow and Barney opens the garage doors, what you'll find inside is quite probably the world's greatest tribute to what is quite possibly the world's greatest invention. If someone were ever to carve the Mount Rushmore of American folk artists, I think we'd be looking at Grandma Moses, Howard Finster, Henry Darger, and Barney. He creates toilet seats stripped of their utilitarian function. Toilet seats that cannot even be sat on. Dada doesn't get any more Dada than that. Barney had the wisdom and courage to allow form to supersede function, which is artistically how things ought to be and the sort of ideal any cultured civilization should strive towards. With some pieces one senses a subtle commentary on the banality of banality. And as potty humor goes, it's very highbrow. Well, I think it's all terribly interesting, but it could do with a bit of dusting. Had he come of age in a different age, in the heyday of surrealism, for example, perhaps Barney's art would be hanging in the Metropolitan and the Dorset. Had he frequented the same Parisian salons and cafes as Man Ray and Salvatore Dali, perhaps his name would be as well known as theirs. I can't imagine the man wouldn't harbor some sort of jealousy towards that whole surrealist crowd. I know I would. I think it's a national disgrace that the post office has yet to issue a Barney Smith stamp. Lassie got a stamp. Star Trek got a stamp. Have you seen The Final Frontier? It's an unconventional medium for expression, yes, but it would be wrong to dismiss it as simply in-your-face art. Some of Barney's pieces look as though they would be perfectly happy to stick it in the other end, too. This is still a toilet seat if you can't actually sit on it. From a purely existentialist point of view, the work is complex and subtle. Barney's work draws on the American consumer's passion for mindless acquisition and useless artifice and traces that compulsion all the way out to its logical and somewhat anal conclusion. Are there hidden meanings in the work? Should a piece like Pipes, for example, be interpreted as a subtle little poke at Magritte?
There's no illusion here. The work is real. It's solid. What Barney is saying is, this is a pipe. This is lots of pipes. We're not pretending anymore. It's a slap in Magritte's face is what it is, an artistic spank on the bottom. As long as the stuff stays stuck to the seat, I don't care what he does. I just don't want any of his crap winding up in my sewage system. As bathroom art goes, there have certainly, in their day, been more controversial and shocking works. Degas' bathing nudes come to mind. Keith Haring's washroom mural. The shower scene from Psycho. (coughs) None of which were as controversial or shocking as Marcel Duchamp's fountain. You have to understand there's a certain resentment in the arts community towards any type of work involving plumbing and has been ever since Marcel Duchamp walked into the independent artist's exhibition with a urinal under his arm. This is Marcel Duchamp's fountain. Created quite the stink back then. Got tossed out of the New York exhibition, but would go on to redefine what we mean by the word art. The idea of art as an act of creation began to be replaced by the idea of art as an act of conception. Which opened up the field for anybody with a crazy idea in their head to become an artist. Painters and sculptors who had spent decades perfecting their skill sets were not amused. suppose he did with all that footwear. You can't make great art without great commitment. The trick has always been how does one rise to a level of artistic commitment like that and not wind up institutionally committed as well. I don't care what they wrote in the newspaper. Those New York critics are crazy. I only glue crap to the underside of the seat. Barney's and my work are nothing alike. The fellow has a delightful imagination, very clever. I love the bit with the dancing satyr on the Isle of Man. Oh, and that thing he did where he scales straight up the Guggenheim Museum, climbing from the one parapet to the next. I think you're thinking about Matthew Barney. Oh, yes, I believe you're right. Who's Barney Smith? The man is a national treasure. The man is a national treasure. The man 
Island is a national treasure. They gave Curious George a state.